Hey there, model fans. Welcome back to Richard's Toy Room. Today, this is something very special. As you can see by the boxes in front of you, this is the MPC 1928 Lincoln Sport Touring by Locke. It's the Gangbusters edition. And these are really old vintage kits from the 60s. I think one of these is the first release and the second one is the second release. Um, I got these both in the same lot on eBay and I was hoping that between the two of them I could get at least one complete kit, which I do. Unfortunately, both of the kits were missing the tires. <laughs> So I put out a call on Facebook to a, a model group and um, someone in there, he is a gentleman from Belgium and uh, of all places, and he offered me a set of tires and he didn't want any money or anything, any, even, not even postage for him. He sent it to me for free. So that was very nice of him. So I'm acknowledging him in this video. And um, I will uh, tag him when I finish posting the video as well. So one of these kits, uh, you probably can't see, it's quite a little off camera here, but um, most of the parts are still in the trees, like in this kit. And I don't remember which one this came in. They're both the same. There's nothing different about the kits whatsoever. And then here's like the decal sheet from the kit. I don't think I'm going to use it and uh, there's really not much on here except you got some things to put on the prohibition bottles and you got some a couple of police stickers and then some license plates and I don't even know what these other four are I think they go on the the crates for the bottles but it's just kind of like gibberish the instructions are not identical so that's why I'm thinking one is the from a second release perhaps they found that some of the instructions weren't clear in the first one like uh, let's see if I can find one of the examples that's really obvious. But anyway, if you look at the instruction sheet here, down here, like this whole part here is missing on this sheet. And it basically gives you a little close up of what you're doing to some of these parts. And also, like in this one, it'll tell you lubricate parts here, lubricate parts here, but it's not listed on any of the one down here. So I think they updated this, this darker sheet here to give you better instructions. So, but I will show you the instructions afterwards because since I've got all this stuff in the way right now, I want to show you the parts in the kit. And, um, so why don't we take a look at the boxes. So first of all, here is the one of the boxes. And then the equivalent, this is the other box. All right, so then now box one, here is the front part of the box. And then box two is different. Now the, uh, the ends on each box are the same as the lid. So box one again, here is the flip side of the uh, long part of the box. And again, totally different on box two. Give you that kind of information. Now the instructions are also different on the back in just one way. The 65 Corvette Stingray model is shown with a parachute coming off. I mean, it's the same part number and everything. Everything else is identical. So I'm thinking the kit must be from maybe 65, 66, something like that. That's my, that's my guess. Now this kit down here is the kit that I'm, I believe if I'm not mistaken, this is the kit I'm going to build. I have to look and see because some of the parts got damaged and I'll show you that real quick. For example, if you could see this, The window, there was a tire 
that was on top of it for some time, right there. And it left a big melt mark on both windshields, unfortunately. As I'll try and see if I can clean this up. I don't think it's going to clean up because it's very deep. And if not, I, I will um, I will just use this as a pattern and I'll make a new windshield for it. And use that one instead of using the uh, only good one from the other kit. Okay, so like I said, I went through this kit when I got this, or these kits when I got this, and uh, if I remember correctly, I do have all, every single part, and there's a lot of parts, there's like over 200 parts in this kit. I believe there was, I, I believe I accounted for every single part, but the parts that were missing are just some inconsequential parts, like I think some of the weapons were missing, and nothing structural for the car and uh, so so let's take a look at it so you got your your chassis bottom here and this looks like a really nice kit too and then you've got your body and this is like the insert for the rear seat and everything's molded in black or chrome or clear so here's the uh, body with the doors and the cowl. As you can see the chrome is a lot nicer in this one than this one. So you know here as an example of a bunch of parts that have fallen off. So like all these wheels have fallen off of here. And that. And this. Another wheel. Another part of that. So instead of me showing you all these ones, I'll show you the ones that are still on the trees because that's a little easier. So now here's like the roof. The convertible top now you can change the convertible top roof see this has got a little melt mark on it from a tire and like here's the other one in here it's also got some melt marks and scuffs on it so that's kind of like a which one do you want to use <laughs> it's kind of hard to show a lot of these parts that are all loose here but I'll just try to show you as many as I can like here's some hood parts now the hood actually opens on this it has hinges and uh, here's some tire parts I don't know what those are and here is like most of the there's like parts falling off everywhere here's like most of the um, gangsters you've got two piece here one sitting one standing and here's like different arms. One has a gun in it. Here's some machine guns and shotguns, a, a uh, guitar case, violin case, whatever you want to call it. Some little guns and weapons. And these are the crates that you build for the bottles. Here's another example. See the tires. This is one reason why you should almost always open a model kit, especially an older one where they didn't bag the tires, because you can see here on this door panel. Luckily this is the back side so it won't show but it put a big melt mark on that. So here's the other door panel. Here's some of the frame. You have to build the, the frame. And that looks a little warped but you should be able to work with that. Now here's some of the floorboards and seats and gas tank and stuff like that. Radiator. Some more little, these are convertible top parts. <laughs> you see parts just fall off when you pick it up. You got parts of your engine, you've got the luggage rack, which you can have, I don't know if it's foldable, but it um, can put it in at least two positions it's possibly foldable, I'm not sure. More suspension parts. This also has steering that is connected right to the steering wheel and that you can
turn the steering wheel and it will actually turn the wheels. So like here's an example, it has like a bulleted up, if you can see the holes in it, radiator. Oh, like here, here's part of like the luggage compartment, trunk, whatever you want to call it. And on the back, it has little pre-drilled holes, but they're not all the way through, that you can open up and make it look like it's shot up full of bullet holes. There's other parts of it that are like that too. I did find the other windshield and it's in good shape. So not sure why I would have put the good set in to the one that I wanted to build, but I'm definitely gonna have to go through this one more time and make sure that I did verify all the parts and everything and uh, try to, like I said, make one kit to save and one kit to to build with the uh, with the damaged parts. It's also got white wall inserts for the tires. Of course, now you can't see them on white. <laughs> so I'll show you the white one because it's easier to see. But basically, it just kind of tells you about the Lincoln here, saying it's a really fast car and gangsters liked it and police liked it and bootleggers and all that stuff. And it's a really nice instruction. It's, it's, it's your, your old uh, type instruction sheet with, um, with pretty much you read it and it tells you what to do. But very good pictures as well. I mean... And they're so good that, I mean, even they thought that they needed to be fixed in the uh, updated one. So, but I mean, that's, that's pretty nice though. See here's the, where you have the, the folding hood. Now, oh, you also got these little jump seats that fold up. They fold down, whatever you want to call them. Here's your luggage rack. See, it's showing extended or folded, but... Um, I'm still not quite sure if it has to be glued into place or if it's if it's uh, if it's movable once it's built. I think you have to pick one or the other. Here's how you put together all the frame, and uh, I mean the radiator alone here is four parts. Here's all the steering mechanism and stuff that it wants you to put all together with the gears and all that stuff. Got your windshield or your uh, Headlights and stuff down here. Here's where you're putting all your interior parts together. And here's your final assemblies here. You're putting on like the bumpers and the mirrors and the spare tires. You get to decide if you want the bullet riddled windshield or if you want just the regular windshield. And over here, it shows you how to fold the seats what they're supposed to look like when you get them folded up. And then here's the convertible top boot or the fully extended convertible top. And you don't glue it in place, so you can actually pop this off and swap it out if you want to put the top down. And then it goes into uh, just some final details. Um, putting like here, if you're doing make the police car, you put the siren and the um, light. Running board things, here's your trunk. It's a three-piece thing that does not have a hinge on it, but it tells you if you want it to like be open. It just tells you to use a piece of like uh, scotch tape as a hinge. And then over here you got your uh, your figures. It tells you how to put them together. Put the uh, bootleg crates stuff together. Now you got see you got an optional arms. You got them either just uh, open or with holding pistols. Tells you to put the decals on the little bottles, and then they go in the crates. And then I showed you the back already. And like I said, the uh, in here they do have some more fine detailing instructions that are for instructions that weren't clear in the first edition. So interestingly, though, one other thing that was in that kit, and it, I know it didn't come with it because it's a monogram, but. I don't know how it got in there. Obviously, you know, somebody probably had a monogram model got tossed in somehow with this these, one of these kits. But it's a slot car and uh, slot racing cars and accessories 
124th and 132nd scale little two-page catalog from Monogram Models. I'm thinking this is probably late 50s, maybe early 60s. And it just shows, uh, you know, like six or eight models that you could uh, buy to use on your slot car set. And then, and then on the back it has some prices for some stuff that you can buy. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I'll give you a little closer look at that. Little bonus there. All right, so I got to get to work on figuring out uh, which one of these I'm going to build, and uh, so just stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to do the update on this 1928 Lincoln MPC kit from 1965. So what I wanted to touch on in the update were some of the engineering gimmicks, whatever you want to call them, that they've uh, employed into this, and obviously also tell you, you know, how things have gone so far. Um, so why don't we talk about the, the build first. Um, very impressed with this kit, and I know after doing a little bit of research uh, since shooting the first part of the video that this has been released several times, also under AMT at, at, at some point. Uh, but um, I think, I should have wrote it down, but I think the last time I saw an iteration of this released was possibly like back in the 90s. Um, I'll double check that. But anyway, um, a wonderful kit so far. Everything has gone together very well. Um, very few problems with anything. Just some of the things that I made notes about as I was going through the kit. The cylinder blocks for the engine appear backwards from how they're shown in the manual. And this was not corrected in the second edition of the manual that I also have. Uh, the pictures are wrong, but the parts fit only one way, so you can't really mess it up either way. But I just want to let you know that, you know, if you're going by the pictures in the manual, the pictures are incorrect. Now, also had a little issue with the way the suspension, it's a very complicated and fragile suspension, the way this all hooks up, because it's steerable from the wheel, the steering wheel. And these tie rod ends, um, the way they were designed were that you were supposed to just pop them on and they would stay over like a kind of an enlarged tit on the end of them but unfortunately it was uh, the, the mold didn't quite give you that that lock in uh, and on it so what I had to do was take a, a soldering iron on low heat and just tap 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 on the pin until it locked the um, tie rods and in, in place. Not a big deal, but just had to do it. As far as we're looking under here, here's the all the detail done underneath. It's a very nice engine. I'll show you that in a second. All the suspension here, the gas tank, the exhaust, and the steering. Well, as long as I'm showing you that, I'll kind of give you an idea. Let's see if I can reach in here. Now it'll just be easier to do it up here. For now. There's not a whole lot of movement, and it does kind of... It does kind of hit one way with uh, this one of these mechanisms over here. It uh, kind of rubs on part of the uh, system up here, so it... But, I mean, it's not like you're going to be driving an actual car. It's easier with the steering wheel on, obviously, but it's hard to reach in there and grab this little shaft. But you can see that. I'm sure. Anyway, so here's the engine. Very nice, very nice detail on that engine. 
tried to be as correct to pictures that I saw and my uh, choice of paint colors and stuff like that. Now as far as the hoods, now I do have an issue with one of them. Um, as you can see, here's where we'll get into the uh, the, the uh, little detail things I'm talking about. Now the hoods, as you can see up here, where my fingers are moving, there's a little tit on each end of this and that locks into here and then where the radiator is going to go on each side. Well this one here, this one was either not molded right or it snapped off at some point but it's missing so I'm going to have to uh, glue a piece of plastic on there to uh, recreate that missing hinge otherwise the hood won't stay in place because the hood will go on on here like that and then they're supposed to flip up like that and then fold so you can like, and I'm, that's supposed to do it on both sides. So both hoods will fold like that. So that's a pretty cool feature right there. As long as everything goes together right, that should work really cool. Uh, the other thing was the front seat. So I'll show you in here while you can get a look. You might not be able to see it later. There's the dashboard and the, all the doodads in there. But um, the front seat goes over this little shaped thing here and it's supposed to be a removable um, like a secret compartment as, as well as the one in the back here for the back seat but these are so finicky and troublesome I could barely get them in there to begin with so I glued the two cushions together I'm going to glue the seats in I'm not going to have it like a gangster compartment but I will leave the rear seat uh, not glued in and I might put some of their accessories back in there. Now the um, these are the little flip seats up here and I'll try to show this again um, when I get the whole kit done but these go up like that and then they fold back to be called jump seats I think. So they're for two more passengers. They work really well. See, they engineered a lot of this stuff to move, but then in the instructions it tells you to glue the parts together. I think it's because they realized that they were so fine that they weren't going to hold up to any sort of um, handling. This is the rear passenger second windshield, and it's got these little vent wings on there. And not to go off on a tangent, but there were supposed to be similar ones to the front windshield, but they never designed them for this model. They don't exist. So I don't know why. So they go all the trouble to make the second one, but not the actual ones on the front. But anyway, so see, these are supposed to be, you know, movable. And the one side actually does move, as you can see. But the hinge on the other one is really wasn't molded very well. And as you can see, it just fell right off, but barely touched it. So I may leave that one movable. I don't know, but I don't know if it make much sense to leave one movable and not the other one. So I'll probably just figure out how I want them to look with the uh, when it's on the car, and then I'll just put a dot of glue in there to hold them in place. So it will stay, but it easily knocked off as soon as you touch it or vibrates. Or, see, so nice, nice thought, but you know they could have maybe engineer just a little better and then it would have been a pretty cool uh, movable feature. And speaking of movable features, here's another one, same idea. This is the trunk uh, platform, whatever you want to call it, luggage rack. And this mounts like this on the back of the car. And they did actually engineer this so that you could fold it up how it is now or fold it down, you know, to put the trunk on, which I'll show you in a second. And it does work, except for the fact that it's so fine that just putting these little rods that, that hold the, uh, the trunk 
platform up in place. There was two little tits that should have uh, been enable these rods to pivot, but like I said, they were so minute and fine that just pushing the rods into place into the top of the rack sheared them right off. So the only thing holding them in that place right now is friction. They'll probably fall when I try moving this, but let me see what will happen. So I will actually glue this in a flat position, but I wanted to, I wanted to share how it actually was designed to, to actually work when they designed this kit. already popped out. See you see how the one already popped out. But now it's it's not even quite flat yet. I have to I didn't want to break it. It's so fragile. But then the luggage thing just sits on top of it like like this one's on the back of the car so i have to i'm going to glue that in place i just i really wanted to show how that was a very nice idea but just didn't quite work out now as far as the luggage box trunk um there was actually a little i don't know if you can see it in the picture where there was like a little uh, piece of sprue kind of it was kind of right in the middle of the hood I mean the lid, and I, I left it on there intentionally because um, it makes it a little easier to actually open it. And I painted the inside black, flat black, and I put a little piece of Scotch Magic tape on the back, which you won't see, just so it would be easier to open and close this. I mean, maybe it would have still been okay, easy to open it, but at the time, it was like really sitting tight on there and it was kind of hard to to uh, get it open so I left that just a little bit of nub on there so you could grab it with your finger or your fingernail and uh, probably end up putting some stuff in there and uh, last couple things we got they gave you these little crates to build and um, what, what I did was for the decals I did not use I only had one set between the two kits so I just photocopied them on a printer, printed them out on just some paper, and then I just put some double-sided tape on the back of them and cut them out with some scissors. So that's where you see on the, the boxes here, the labels. I'm gonna put them on both sides. And then inside, I didn't do all the bottles yet, but as you can see, I got five in this one. Now, I made these inserts. It did not come with these little box inserts to hold six bottles. I just took a piece of, uh, you know, uh, like a comic book backer board, and I cut it out so that it would uh, make that little insert, and then I just went over it with a black Sharpie. And as for the bottles, I put the labels on those as well. They didn't all come out, but... See if I, can. I was trying to decide if I should try to like paint some kind of liquid or something inside of them, but then I thought, well, maybe it's just vodka. Then I don't have to go to the trouble. <laughs> but um, here you can see some of the the decals that I printed out and just double-sided taped them on the labels, the bottles. They're pretty cool. And then I just touched a little bit of paint on the top for make it look like a cork. And the last thing was they gave you like a little can, which I'm assuming was like either oil or gas. And what I decided to do was I went online and I found an actual vintage uh, can of oil, like from the time period. And I printed out four copies of it for four sides. I did make the mistake of uh, deciding instead of cutting them out individually, I just kind of stuck them all together and made like a wrap around label and I, I didn't leave enough room between them so it ended up with on one edge like it didn't quite fill in <laughs> but that's okay so I made them a vintage oil can with a of an actual 
brand from that time period. So I thought that was a nice little touch. We'll put it somewhere, maybe on the running board or something. Uh, so basically, um, that's it for the update. Uh, the only other thing that I found, I didn't bring the part over to show, was the, the rear bumper that goes on here. It was redesigned in the second model edition that I have. And I, yeah, I saw it in the directions and also I compared the parts. But I didn't want to mix the two. So I'm going to f figure out a way to make the first edition work, but it's, it's such a pain in the butt. The, the, it's three pieces and they don't really fit together well. And the second one was redesigned so they fit together really nice and look good. So I'm just gonna have to do my best with that. So anyway, that's the update on this for now. And um, I don't foresee any other updates. Uh, everything's going together great. So just stay tuned and you'll probably uh, see the final car right after this. Okay, well, welcome to the final reveal of this uh, pretty decent car model. I'm very impressed at the quality and innovation that this 55 year old kit actually possessed. I mean there's there's really very little to, to uh, complain about on this kit. Um, I did have an issue with the, the the top, the hard top, well whatever you want to call it, the up top and where the little things on the side hook up um, for some reason, that didn't want to uh, fit really well. I mean, it, it fits, but it's really tight. As far as everything else, I had to replace that broken off or whatever pin for the one side of the hood. That came out really good. Jeez, I mean, about the only thing I could say bad, if you want to call it about it, um, is the steering mechanism. But that could also be part of, because one of those parts was uh, melted a little bit, you know, from what I showed you before, uh, but I was able to uh, get everything to work. It's just a little tight, but it still works. So I ended up putting a new piece of plastic in there for the window. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm trying to show it at different angles, but this is the original one that had all that gigantic melt from the tire on it, and. I almost got it to the point where I was able to salvage it, but once I got it uh, sanded down, um, unfortunately it got a hairline crack right where that melt was in the center of the windshield, so I decided not to use it because it's like kind of visible. But I was amazed at how much I was able to sand and, and uh, polish this up to be almost uh, a usable part again. But it was just easier to cut a new piece and put it in there. You can't tell. You'd never know. So I need to show you all the little functions on this. So I'm going to have to rearrange all this stuff. And then we'll get it up on the turntable and you can see it for a spin. Um, one thing I did want to point out. I don't know why I constantly point out the faults. But I guess I feel like if I don't point it out, somebody's going to say, Oh, why didn't he point out that he made a mistake there? I don't know what happened here. I didn't notice it until I was putting it together. And by then it was too late. For some reason, the hood and the body came out with two different shades of the same paint. I mean, it came out of the same can. I must have put an extra coat on one of them and didn't realize it. Or I got a better coat on one of them. Because the hood actually looks nice and, you know, metallic-y and, and kind of shiny. But the the body is, is less so, and it's kind of almost like a, just a shade lighter yellow. I mean, you know, by this point it was too late. I had everything together, and there was no way I was going to redo it. So, just wanted to point out that. that was That's me, obviously. It has nothing to do with the kit itself. Great kit. In fact, I'm going to see if I can find the other kit that was in this series. I believe it was, um, I want to say it was a Packard. I don't, I'm going to have to look, but uh, there, was, there was two, if I remember right, of this when this came out. Okay, so um, what you see here is this is the convertible boot when the top is down. And you got some of your little bottles and stuff that go in the case here. I got them out here so you can see. And the 
I showed you the gas can earlier, or oil can, whatever you want to call it. So let me show you some of the cool features on this, and uh, and uh, we'll keep going. Okay, so this is going to be a little difficult. Um, I've got the camera on a small tripod to try to keep it a little bit more steady, but it's uh, the only way I can get it to get the right angle is it almost wants to tip over, so i got to hold it with one hand. So uh, I don't think I showed you this. Here's like the little... I gotta use tweezers for all this stuff. That's like the little foot stand, foot whatever you call it, for the uh, rear seat passenger. And then I did, I hinged the seat with some tape in the back. That's where I hid some of these tools and uh, like a blackjack, some knives, hand grenades underneath the rear seat. And then this part here you got these jump seats that fold out and fold up and then this little secret compartment that just kind of popped open by itself down in here Let's see if I can get you a better lighted view in there I'm kind of working against the light here Let me turn the car a little bit here maybe you can see it better All right. So, as you can see down in there, that little trap door has a shotgun and um, a pistol. And they're, one of the pieces that was missing from this particular kit was the, uh, the Tommy gun and um, I think one of the other pistols, if I remember right. So, and then you can see the convertible boots on and there's the luggage rack. And then this would go back up. It will stay, but it's kind of hard to do with one hand there. And then the seats would fold back up, obviously. All right. Now let's see if we can move it over here. Yeah, there's the driver I did. And uh, they also give you this violin case, you know, the stereotypical, we got a gun in there for the uh, gangsters, which is now falling down into the car. <laughs> and let me see if I can get these hoods to open. So you got opening hood there. It's stuck. There we go. Okay. The uh, other side does the same thing. If I can get in here. Now only am I doing this one-handed. I'm doing it left-handed, which I'm not. It does open all the way. It's just really hard for me to do this because the car wants to keep moving on top of everything else because the wheels actually do roll very well on this. Now, if you also want to see the uh, steering wheel, sorry for the lighting, but this is the best I can do with the way I'm doing this right now because I don't have any room on the other side of the table to do this. There they go. See them turning with the steering wheel? So, uh, I believe that's all the features on the car, if I remember right, looking at everything here. Let me put the top back on, the up top, and uh, the trunk, and um, throw it, oh, I didn't show you this guy, did I? Painted him, and I put a little base on him. So let me get everything up on the turntable, and uh, 
back on the other tripod and we'll finish this video up.